In this video, you'll learn how to set up your XLS form. There are a couple steps you'll have to follow each time before you begin filling out the content of your form that it has to do with the way your Excel file is organized. Open up a blank Excel document, and the first thing we need to do is create three tabs. The first tab is called Survey. It's important that these tabs are named exactly as we're typing them here, Survey with a lowercase s. This tab will eventually contain most of the content of the form, like the questions, question types, and some settings related to each question. Next, we'll create another tab called Choices. Again, all lowercase. This is where answer options for multiple choice questions will eventually live. And the third and final tab is the Settings tab. At a minimum, the information in this tab will specify the name of your form and the name of the table that the records submitted via this form live in. It can contain much more, which we'll touch on in a future video. Now that we have all of our required tabs created, let's go back through each tab and create all of the required column headers. In the Survey tab, there are three columns that are required here. The Type column will eventually contain the question type. For example, is this a text question, a date picker, a multiple choice question? The Name column is the variable name of the question. This will never be displayed to a user filling out a form, but it will be used in the table that contains the records submitted via the form as the column headers. And finally, we have the Label column. This column will contain the actual questions as displayed to the user. For example, how old are you or where do you live? Let's move on to the Choices tab. As a reminder, this tab contains all of the answer options for questions where the user is required to select from a list of options. The List Name column contains the name of the list that these answer options are a part of. Next, we have name, which is the variable name of the answer option. Finally, we have the label column, which is the option as displayed to the user. Let's move over to the settings tab. The form underscore title column will contain the title of the form as displayed to the user. The form underscore ID column specifies the table name. And the version column is actually not required. However, it's best practice to always note the version number of the form. So as a rule, I always include this column. Now that we have the structure of our XLS form ready to go, let's save it. The name you give this file will not control anything about the form itself, so you do have some flexibility. However, the file cannot start with a number or contain any spaces. I'm going to call my file XLS form underscore template, and I'm actually going to use this as a template moving forward. That's all for setting up the basic structure of your XLS form. In our next class, we'll begin adding content to it.